like as a fan of Magic the Gathering, I saw some stuff that happened and it was, is, is this a good video guys? This dude is awesome. Yeah, it is. Oh my God. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Whoa. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Give me a second. I'm gonna mute, I'm gonna mute this. Okay. So, uh, as a as a fan, name ten cards. Um. Okay. How about I name this card? Tularian Community College is based off of Tularian Academy that was added into the game that is a land card that allows you to tap and add one colorless mana to your mana pool for every single artifact that you have in play. Is it blue mana? Is it, it's blue? Oh yeah, that no, you're right, it is blue because I remember I used a lot of the blue artifact cards with that card. Yeah, that's right, the blue artifact affinity cards. No, yeah, you're totally right. Uh, could have named, uh, All the Land for easy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty more. And, uh, yeah, Demolish. Fake fan, exactly. Counterspell, two blue mana. It's an interrupt. It stops a cast. There you go. Are you a real Magic the Gathering fan? Name every card. You play Magic? Yeah. What do you mean? Look, look, I, I don't think I've showed people this for a while. Uh, these are four of my different decks. Um... This one was an Orzhov deck. Uh, this one was a red-white deck, Sliver deck. Uh, I, this is Artifact uh, Affinity deck. Uh, this one uh, was like a mill uh, fucking uh, graveyard deck, I think. And then so I've got all those decks as well. And then also we've got, this is my binder. And let's see what's in the binder. Oops, give me a sec. Oh, one sec real quick. Oh, not that one. Oops. So we got right here. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just full screen so y'all can see. Um, we got. Oh, there it is. Like we got. Let's see. Uh, are there any other good Wrath of God? I have the original Wrath of God right there. Um, let's see. Are there any other? Oh, sword. That's the uh, sword supplashers. This was uh, the second reprint. Of swords to plowshares. Um, fucking, let's see. Are there any more cards you guys would know? Uh, Disen oh, we got Disenchant. Uh, I, I don't ever really use these. Let's see. Oh, Meogen of the Cleansing Fire. This is right whenever I first started playing. I started playing at the, uh, uh, fucking that series. What was it called? Uh, not Bushabi deck. Uh, Bushido deck. Or whatever it was. I don't remember the actual name of it. If I remember the Kamigawa, yeah, there it is. Um, let's see, do we have any other, uh, do we have any other old ones? Yeah, so like, I would take these cards, right? And so, I'll just take this one out, uh, and just show you guys. So like, I, I knew how much some of these cards were worth. I remember I bought this card. They're like, Swords of Postures, right? Like, the, that's like the, the second, the second print of it. And I looked it up online, how much it was. And I bought this off of somebody for like a quarter, or something like that, back in like 2004. And obviously, like, they're all organized by, you know, like, black, green, uh, blue, uh, let's see here, red, obviously, um, fucking, oh, these are, like, multicolor, and that I probably have at the back, I've got, um, a bunch of, like, colorless and, like, uh, lands. Now, it's worth a lot? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I probably have, like, uh, $10,000, probably worth of cards, maybe more. Uh, I I'm not really sure. Do you have Black Lotus? No, I have Lotus Petal, though. I have multiple Lotus Petals. I do not have Black Lotus. I don't even have the uh, Black Lotus reprints or anything. Uh, I never really gave a fuck about it. Yeah. Playing WoW today? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna play WoW in a bit. Uh, I'm just gonna knock out a few of these and we're gonna play WoW. Uh, I got second edition Charger, but it's German. I'll wait, wrong game, I bet. First print, Alpha, Beta, Revised, Forge Series, Sword Splashers. I don't know exactly which one it is. I'd have to go back and look. I remember whenever I looked at it, I thought it was the second print. It could have not been, but it was a rare card and I really wanted it because I thought it was insanely fucking good. Uh, why is your chair wearing a sweater? Uh, my org is uh, doing uh, merch sales, and so I put it behind the chair so people could see it. I want to see Asmong will have a magic game night with friends? Nuh uh. No, no, you don't. Here's what you want to see. You want to see me, Rich, Nick, Seer, Soda Poppin, Tectone, maybe we can teach Emeru to play too, all doing a Magic the Gathering draft live. 
That's what you want to fucking see. That's what I want to do. I want to do a Magic the Gathering draft live. Evil Waste, thank you guys for five good subs. I appreciate that. One day we'll do that. I don't know when that's going to be, but uh, hopefully it could be sometime soon. I don't know. Make it happen. Richard, I've been talking about this for like uh, two years. And maybe get some other uh, streamers in, in uh, Austin that play Magic. I, I know a few of them. And uh, invite them over too. <sighs> what do you want to do with it? Don't invite Emru. She beat you all. Oh, yeah, yeah. True, man. So true. No, actually, like, the only person I'd be worried about beating me is uh, is, is probably Rich. Because, like, Rich, Rich knows a lot about the game. Like, I know, I probably know as much as he knows about the game, but everything that I know about the game is outdated. Whereas, like, he's much more uh, current with the game. Gotta get a ref? Nah, nah. It's not gonna be a DCI sanctioned tournament. It's just fucking, it's just a thing. And also, like, yeah, I have my DCI card over there. Like, it's got, like, fucking my, my shit on there. So, like, I don't want to show y'all. But, like, yeah, I've had, I had that, I actually qualified to, um, to play in, like, the, the local tournaments whenever I was, like, 15 or 16 because I would draft, uh, fucking in Ravnica, I would draft Red, White, Boros every week. Every week I would draft the same thing. And it was so bad that people started drafting against me. They started pulling, like, you know, like they see a lightning helix or some shit like that, and they pull that out just to make sure I don't get it. Everyone did? Yeah. I went hard on that. Let me go back over here. Lightning here is one of my favorite fucking cards, man. I love it. Anyway, let's watch this video. I just want to make sure y'all know, like, I, I'm i a real one. Like, I played Magic a lot. I played Magic in the library during lunch at school. Like, that's some fucking nerdy shit, but at least we didn't play Yu-Gi-Oh. All right, let's watch it. This is the youngest Magic the Gathering fan. Oh, I would like you to join me in an exercise. Okay. Oh, actually, Please imagine I as sincerely as possible that as a way to celebrate Magic the Gathering's 30th anniversary, Wizards of the Coast decided to release special anniversary edition booster packs with reprints of beta cards, including Power Black Nine Lotus, right? and Original Dual Lands, oh. Black Lotus, of course, yeah. and yeah. getting around the reserve list by using an alternate card back. So, like, Rich and I talked about this. Like, I wasn't even really sure what the reserve list was, but basically Magic the Gathering has, like, a list of cards that they say they'll never reprint again for whatever reason. And then they went against what they already had said that they wouldn't reprint, and they reprinted it again. Imagine that each of these packs would contain 15 cards, yeah. 13 in the modern frame, one rare, three uncommons, mm -hmm. seven uncommons, and two basic lands, plus one basic land in the retro frame, That's like the original one additional one, yeah. retro frame card, and a token. So again, I'm asking you to imagine that they celebrated 30 years of Magic the Gathering by essentially reprinting the original Magic the Gathering set from year one of the game. This would be a slam dunk product. Yeah. Sure, the card wouldn't technically be tournament legal because of the card backs. Yeah, but sure. I mean, I think that's kind of cool to reprint all the old stuff, but it gets better. They would still be awesome proxies that gave you the feel of opening a, of a beta pack and left you with either collectibles or proxies that you can use in casual decks. Yeah. What a beautiful way to celebrate 30 years of Magic the Gathering. By letting cards the players had. experience Magic the Gathering year one. You could yeah. do a beta draft with your friends. Yeah. Imagine wow. the events local game stores could hold with such a product. The celebration. That would be really cool. We could I'm excited. We could all have the memories. Wow. We could Magic all make classic. the joy and the love no of changes. the game of Magic the Gathering bringing us all together. Can you imagine it? Well, that's exactly what they did. Every single thing I said is true, and it's happening for Magic the Gathering's 30th anniversary. Wow. It's real. I'm excited. Only, it's going to cost $1,000. Not for a box, but for four of those booster packs. $1,000. $999 will get you 60 randomized proxy cards. It will not be sold through your local game store. The only way to get this will be by ordering online directly from Wizards of the Coast. And unlike Secret Layers, it will not be printed to demand, but rather there is only a limited supply available. This. Bro, these are like NFTs. This is as bad as NFTs. Like, what the fuck is this?
Like, what is this? Like, really? Like, you're you're buying NFTs? Holy fuck! What is this? This is so bad. This product is not a celebration of 30 years of magic, nor is it a celebration of the. It's a celebration of 30 years of uh fucking uh business practices. People who play it. It is a product that is deliberately and knowingly priced out of the reach of a majority of Magic the Gathering players. Yep. It is a product for Hasbro. It is a product for the shareholders. It and sure as we is. we are so often told. Well, the worst part about it is like a, a really high-end product like that, if they only print a certain amount of them, there's only like a finite amount of money that they can make from this. Which is what's so weird to me about it. It's like, why would you put something out that you can only make a finite amount of money about? And I bet, you know the amount of money that they probably make from this? Is probably less than like probably two or three million dollars. And this company probably clears a hundred million dollars a year in sales. So it's like, why would you do something like this that's like such a bad look for your brand and just end up making yourself look bad? It doesn't make sense. So many times, this product is not for you. Uh-oh. To celebrate 30 years of Magic the Gathering, we knew we had to go big. But Elaine, just how big did we go? So, so big. That's a lot, I mean, $1,000, I mean, they're not lying. Guys, they're not lying about this at all. Like, that's $1,000. That was big. That's how big. Mm -hmm. We knew we had to do something really, really special. Uh, so what we did was we put together a product that is worthy of reflecting 30 years of magic. Wow. Uh, that's in inspired by those first years of magic and really evokes the feelings, you know, of, of those first times of magic. And we made this collectible, commemorative, mind-blowing, amazing new product mm -hmm. that we're calling 30th Anniversary Edition. I have a lot to say about this product. Oh, but good. In case I was too detailed in my introduction of it, please allow me to boil it down to the essentials. Okay. To celebrate 30 years of Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast is selling you 60 random cards, of which four are rares, for $1,000. Man. Uh, I think somebody who worked at, uh, you know, maybe Genshin Impact or uh, Tower of Fantasy or uh, what are some of these other games? Like, how, how many of these other ones are, are there? Like, Nikkei, like one of these other things. Like, they, they go and, and now they're working over here. Yeah, the, the, the guy that was the, um, uh, the, the monetization expert for Diablo Immortal uh, got hired by Wizards of the Coast. Four random rares. For one thousand dollars, four random rares that are not tournament legal for one thousand dollars. Yeah. Four random. The thing is also like they already had a paradigm for this. Remember the unglued and like un. Uh, what was the other one that they had? Uh, they were they would print these like fake funny joke cards and you could buy them unhinged. Yeah, there you go. Uh, unhinged cards. Yeah, like we already had a. a a, a, a paradigm for this and a price point for this already and they were proxies too like nobody used those rares that are not tournament legal oh and my God. technically not commander legal for one thousand dollars wow that's right as far as commander is concerned these are as fake as any yeah I, c I could print these out at my own computer what the hell do they need that for yeah i just print this shit out myself any proxy card you might bring to the table, which yes is okay if you ask your playgroup first. But here you're spending a thousand dollars for cards that you need to ask your playgroup first about. You could spend a lot less than that on a lot of talented proxy artists, and then you'd also be bro talented pro bro. Like whenever we would play, like even now, like everybody uses proxies. Like I, I don't want to buy all these cards. It's expensive. I I, I just want to play. Like, yeah, I just want to play with cards. Yeah, I, bro, like, look, 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 real quick. Let me, let me show y'all where we at here, all right? Oh, this is the first one. I probably showed this before on my stream. Man, how many of you guys like Dark Steel Colossus? How many of you guys want to spend $20 for Dark Steel Colossus? Wouldn't be me. So, yeah, that's what I did. 
You troll? I did. I did. Fuck it. I have like one real one. I think like we had a rule for a while that it's like if you had one of them, you could print four, uh, three more for your deck. You know, but like, yeah, that's what I had. Dark Seal's like $100. Oh, I've got like two or three. Actually, I think I, I, think I have two. Sure, you would be getting the card that you actually want instead of just a chance at that card. And the thing is, this would have been, could have been an amazing product, an amazing celebration. Yeah. It was only put out at a fair price. Yeah. A price that the majority of players could reasonably afford. Furthermore, Wizards of the Coast has sold a product like this before, and back then they did just that, price it reasonably. This is a classic product known as the Collector's Edition. Oh, the original I never saw Collector's these. Edition contained one of every card in beta, a complete wow. set of beta, as well as 60, that's right, 60 lands. And how much did Wizards of the Coast want for this? $49.95. I will repeat that. Because I feel it illustrates just what has happened to this company and to this game. I love how, like, whenever I watch somebody from, like, a completely different community. I mean, like, WoW and, like, Magic probably overlap a lot, right? Sure. But, like, whenever I watch somebody from, like, a completely different community having the exact same fucking problems that, like, I have with video games or other people have with other things, it always fills me with a sense of solidarity. It's like, bro, they're fucking you over too? Yeah, man, they've been doing this shit to me for years. Like, this is, this sucks. A complete set of beta, including the original duels, Power yeah. 9, Moxes, and Black Lotus, and yes, even Animate Wall, 60 lands as well. And, and like, I would have bought one of these to unbox on stream, but like, I don't want to because I just feel like it's, it's like I do it for content, you know? So like, if I feel like the content isn't good, then I won't do it. Like I don't, I don't care about it on a personal level. Like it, because it, it's they're fake cards, right? Uh, and, and like even if they're not fake cards, it's just cardboard. So I mean, it is what it is. So, uh, but like I wouldn't do this. Like yeah, buy it and burn it. That would be funny. <laughs> that would be funny. That would be a good idea. But yeah, I, I wouldn't buy it because like, I just think this is just so. It's so cringe. I don't think anybody would even want to see me unbox this. Like, I'm sure you guys would probably want to see, like, maybe an unboxing of a new set or something. That'd be cool. But, like, fuck this, man. $49.95 versus 60 random cards for $1,000. so dumb. Keep in mind, when you buy the 30th burner. anniversary edition, which I strongly suggest that you do not, you are not even spending that $1,000 on a cool collectible. No. You are spending it on the chance at a gotcha. cool collectible. There is no guarantee as to what you will get. And if you wanted to recreate that complete beta set that Wizards of the Coast sold once for $49.95, once upon a time, a well, very long it would time likely ago. cost you tens of thousands of dollars. To say the odds wow. are against you is an understatement. This is one of- Oh my God. They made one of these? Bro, can I do this? Oh, does he have it? Wanna try your own? Let me see. All right, boys, let me see. Open four packs. All right, let's see how long it's gonna take for me to get a Black Lotus, okay? Who wants to see me loot a Black Lotus right now? Let's do it. Okay. All right, all right, open four packs. All right, Black Lotus. Um, all right, uh, Black Lotus. No, I didn't get it there? Uh, okay, I still didn't get it. Yeah, all right, um, open four packs again. Uh, Mox Ruby, that's, that's nice. Uh, no Black Lotus. Okay. How about now? Um, okay, no black lotus. How much money have we spent so far? $6,000? Oh, that's it? Okay, let's keep going. All right, um... Click the... All right, I'm just gonna click the... I, I, I'm gonna pull for black lotus. Eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000? Oh my god, let me do it again. Ten... Sixteen thousand, thirty-four thousand oh. dollars.
Oh my god! This is so ridiculous! Oh, I got it on first try. Yeah, see, that's actually pretty good. Oh man, $15,000, $16,000. Pull until all rares are collected. You guys ready to see this? A hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars. One hundred and four and fifty-nine thousand dollars. One hundred and forty-two thousand dollars. Oh, this is less than a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred and two thousand dollars. A hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Oh wow. I don't even know what to say. For gold bordered? Yeah. Oh my god. $132,000. What a fucking... What a... F what a... This is like, you know whenever they bring all the sheep in, they try to fleece them? They're like, come on in here. Come on in here. We're gonna take care of you. Oh, we're gonna... We're gonna... We're gonna get to work on you. This is several crazy. simulators wow. that are online and I will link in this video's description. So if you really want to know what you might get in a pack of these cards, yeah. go ahead and check I it out. I immediately did remember, that. remember, each time you do, imagine you just spent $1,000 in order to get results like these. Yeah. Honestly, someone's going to have to crunch the numbers for me because I'm an English major. But it feels like what most people would end up spending in order to get the moxes that they want would just be, you know, what an actual unlimited mox would cost. Why spend what you'd spend on a real piece of power for a fake piece of power? And if you're okay a with a fake That's a piece point. of power, why not just hit print on your printer? Or yeah, support exactly. the numerous amazing proxy artists that are available. And unlike the collector's edition, which was sold at local game stores, the 30th anniversary edition will not be. Well, of course, because then people would say negative stuff about it. You know, proxies, I didn't even use my revised ones. Yeah, what the fuck, man? Your local game store will only get one, just one of these to offer their customers, or three if your local game store is a premium store, which, as we have covered before, it almost assuredly is not. Um, and so yeah, we I think we only have one premium store here in Austin. Directly. How can local game stores get in? Because this is a big party for yes. Magic's 30th anniversary, we plan on sending completely one free of big charge one, one, big one copy of 30th anniversary edition to all WPN stores mm -hmm. and three copies to all premium WPN stores. Okay. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. will include stores in regions where the product cannot otherwise be shipped to, right? Wow. Um, and so everybody in the WPN program will be able to get this. Uh, and it's just so they give you a free spin. That's basically what it is. So it's just like every other gotcha game where they, they go and they send one to the card shop. So then they open it probably where like there's a lot of people there and then they show everybody the free spin. Then after that, they uh, then they can actually talk about it and, you know, they can buy it after that. Yeah. One Gift free spin. We to share with some of our strongest partners. Oh what my is God. so insulting to me is that Wizards of the Coast has presented this as a generous gift from them to the local game stores that, you know, have grown this game, supported oh, this yeah. game, been a vital part of this game and community for over the past 30 years. They're giving them one... Didn't they, didn't they change the fucking... the picture text on White Knight? Because, like, the last one he was wearing a hood... Or was that another one? I forgot which one it was. And only one. And no, they do not have it's the option one? to oh. order an allocation to sell to their customers. Provoke After prejudice. that one copy per store, players will need to log online and order directly from Wizards of the Coast. Oh my god. Quite a thank you to the local game store. Wow. And to the player base, because show of hands, how many people's local game store has more than one magic player? Yeah, I would say probably a lot of them. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, fucking course. Give me one second. I'll be right back. I'm back. A, d a dude came over. He was uh, he he uh, mows my lawn uh, sometimes, and so he's like, "Yo, what up?" He always knocks on the door. He goes like this. I can barely hear that shit. Like, I didn't know what it was. Like, there's a rac raccoons make louder sounds than that. And so anyway, like, yeah, I was talking to him. Probably going to get that shit done the same day as the exterminator.
All right, let's see here. Where we got to start this again? I also did a, I did a check around for them wasps. More than four? More than 12? They're not sending them enough. How many people like usually go to y'all's uh, card shop and play? Like if you guys ever go to the card shop and play, or you used to? For us, it was like uh, 30 dudes. 30, 30 regular dudes. Like, 15, 20, I, you, I used to, I wish I could go again. Uh, yeah, 20 to 30, 30, 10 to 30, depending. Uh, I bet, like, because there's, like, some bigger stores, like, Pat's and, like, Dragon's Lair here in Austin. Like, they're, they're much bigger. Probably have, like, 50, like, maybe 100 people that go there. But, like, the one that I went to had, like, 30. Yu-Gi-Oh! Knights were, like, 50? Yeah. And the combined age between all of those people was probably about 52. To go around, they're sending them literally one, the least amount they can send them instead of sending them nothing. What's more, these will not even be print to demand like secret layers. There is a That's set so amount, weird. a finite amount, which means- Yeah, anytime they, they print artificial scarcity like this, like it's, it, it, never, it never holds up, it's never good. This is like, these are unironically very, real very NFTs. very, very likely that many, many, many Magic the Gathering players who may actually want to spend their money on this yeah. may still not be able to buy one because, again, it's in limited supply. Jesus. It amazes me that on top of all of this, there will still be some whales who, while fortunate enough to have enough money to buy this product, will not be able you to... You gotta keep in mind, like, they're not fortunate enough to have that much money most of the people that buy stuff like this purchase out of their means. It, it, it's not like you're talking about a bunch of, you know, like stockbrokers that just happen to have a fancy for Magic Gathering and they're pulling down 350k a year. And so, yeah, they buy a box. Who gives a fuck? They don't even think about it. But like, nah, nah. A lot of these people, like, they do this shit and uh, they buy outside of their means. Get it. Think about that. It's priced too high for the majority of Magic players to afford. Hell yeah, but it also is. That's ridiculous. In such limited supply that even whales who can afford it may not be able to get it. Yeah, exactly. This product is extremely not for you. In 2018, <laughs> Hasbro announced their decision to double revenue in five years. Man, on plan to double the money they make from Wizards of the Coast. I wonder how that's going to happen. Oh, wait. We're watching a video about how that's going to happen. I strongly believe this is when we started to see the game we knew and love turn into what it is today. It wasn't just the deluge of new products, nor the stupendously greedy ones. It wasn't just that we saw record power mm -hmm. creep and bans, the direct-to-consumer online sales of secret layers, the pop culture explosion of universes beyond, the end of blocks, the end of the Pro Tour, the end of GPs. But it is when we saw all of these things, and it is when we saw Hasbro double their bottom line in little more than half the time they had hoped to do so. And now they want to do it. Sound familiar? Again, the goal is to continue doubling until, until, well, let me- uh, Until they can't double anymore, then they fire that CEO and they remove him, and then they put in a new CEO that, start, that keeps doubling it. Yeah. Bro, they're rolling dubs all the time, man. That's all there is to it. Ask you, what do you think Magic the Gathering will look like for its 35th anniversary? Yeah. Magic the Gathering's 30th anniversary should have been for everyone. But instead, it's only for a few. It is, perhaps, for the collectors, and most certainly it is for the speculators, who will spend tens of thousands of dollars on this product so that they can resell it at a higher price later i have heard yeah that's exactly what people do like and, and the thing is like i would i would do more speculative like purchasing but i just don't really care about it that much i i don't like having to manage these things but like you can make a ton of money if you know how to do that it's nuts this is going to be a great investment it's for those who can comfortably drop $700 mm -hmm. or more just to get in the door for the 30th anniversary celebration in Las Vegas. And wow. then be asked to spend even more just to play some magic, to play in tournaments, or even just to play commander. Costs you to get in, costs you to play. 
and it costs a lot. I remember when Magic the Gathering would celebrate with products that everyone had access to. Not online only sales, not extremely limited printings, not $1,000 investments, but products that went into game stores that could be bought within the same reasonable price range as everything else. I remember when everyone was welcome to come to an event like GP Vegas. Everyone was welcome to walk in the door, get a game of Commander, pay a couple of bucks if you wanted to jam outside events, or a couple more. I'm gonna be honest, like, as I said, I feel so much solidarity with this. Because it's like, you could literally just fucking change two or three words in this. And it would be exactly what people say about gaming. You know what I mean? It was always expensive, bro. But like, the thing is, like a Platinum Angel was like, what? Like $40 or something like this? And, and like, so the amount of money that you would spend on like a fucking, a really good deck, like a, a Abyss deck, is like, yeah, it's probably like 600 bucks, like 700 bucks. Like, yeah, back then, which is like $1,000 now. But like, that's a whole deck. That's it. And this is also for people that plan on playing professionally. For, for like prize money or for and, the, and then you think that's bad go watch fucking warhammer weekend tournament or go full gusto and try for day two in the main magic the gathering isn't about that anymore i'm not sure i know what it is about i'm not sure who this product is for but it isn't for the 30 years worth of players who have supported and loved this game it's that's not true. for the community Magic's 30th anniversary edition is for a small few, and that small few that Wizards has made this product for, it isn't you. I really wish it were. And that's it. And, and, and that's fucking it. And it's just sad. He's totally right. Everything that he said is completely true. This is such a good video. I fucking love so, it. So do you want to? No, no, not this one. Uh, I'm not gonna watch that one today. But uh, I'm not, I don't want to watch a whole lot of shit today because you know, like, there's I don't know if you guys know this, but there's an expansion that came out, and so I, I'm gonna play that. But uh, I'll watch one more video, and then I want to uh, want to move on. But this is such a great video. I've never watched any of his videos before. Tolarian Community College. I'm gonna I'm gonna subscribe and start watching it. Maybe one day I'll get back into magic and, and pay better attention. Holy fucking shit, man. Oh my god. It, it's like this is yeah, Platinum Wow Van Cleef video. Not today, but I wanna get to uh, I wanna get max level. Like that's it. Gonna gold all the races today? Yeah, I'm gonna have fun. I'll watch the Bellyware settings video. I think that'll be useful for a lot of you guys that haven't played it, and so we'll take a look at it. Genshin 3.3 trailer? Maybe I'll watch that. I do plan on playing Genshin Impact eventually. I just don't know exactly when that's going to happen. I, I don't really know, but it should happen eventually. Let me link it to you guys one more time. Make sure to give it a like. I mean, this is... Uh, it, it's really good to see people making videos about this, and I, I heard that, like, somebody involved in Hasbro actually got stepped down or fired, uh, and I think it was, like, after this whole controversy. So hopefully the message the community sent is a lot louder and clearer than you know like gaming is somehow able to send uh, i wish people in video games had more cfo yeah perfect and um the quartering is corny I, I don't know about the quartering anything about that but like what i'm saying is that with, with magic like i just think that this is something that's it sucks like i'm gonna be honest it just fucking sucks that this happened Magic Gathering community must be small enough. Yeah, a, a small enough community is hard to manipulate. A smaller community is harder to manipulate. 